Hello, Cohen Dehardy here from Mumpology.com, and welcome back. I'm sorry about how long it's been since my last tutorial, but some things have come up. Anyways, to bring us all off with a new tutorial, I would like to bring in this wonderful, amazing system that I will demonstrate here. That it basically will automatically get, and it's really, really simple, will automatically get your cube's location. So, see, my, I have a cube here that can move around. If I hit spacebar, his position is uh, sent twice into the into a console, so zero zero zero. And if I do it, if I move him over to here, hit spacebar. Uh, need to, there we go. It's a thing. It's called quick edit. When you have a, on the, you can select a console. And uh, you see his position was executed. So if I run the game again, I move over here, hit spacebar, his position is printed, hit it again, his position is printed. And this can be modified in all kinds of ways to help you with, well, I'd say it's most beneficial in voxel games, but if you want to make a debug menu in your game or just use it for debug purposes in general, this is a very useful script setup. So the logic is actually very simple. I just have simple cube motion going on here. And I have the, uh, the spacebar key hooked up to a Python controller with a script in it. So let's create this. Don't worry about all the other objects here. Uh, so new reload startup file. So basically I'll just use the default cube here because it doesn't really matter all that much. And um, so if I full screen this, so you can see better. Let's go down to here, at a new Python control keyboard. I'll put it to spacebar, and it'll be set to tap. You can adjust the controller around that as much as you want. Then I'm going to add a Python controller, wire that in, and there we go. I'll just drag open a text editor here. Now, as far as writing the script goes, I'm not going to use Blender's internal text editor. I like to use... Uh, Notepad++, so language, Python. So, uh, the script. Let us solve the script. So, the first thing we're going to need to do right off the bat is, as always, import the BGE, or Blender Game Engine. The next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to import game logic as G. That is that what you have to write. Game logic as G. So that's and then cont equals G dot get current roller like so and then on the next line is own equals count dot owner on the next skip a line and I'll just do it and then pause equals own dot position oops misspell there then we're gonna say we're gonna have x y oops why was that x, y, and z, and they're all, uh, this x is going to be equal to uh, position, we'll say, pause zero, and this is going to be equal to pause one, and that is going to be equal to position two, like so. And then on the next line, um, so that we can get our console information, of course, this is probably not going to be used in your final edit unless you're doing debug purposes. Uh, we're just going to print the following statements. So print, and then x, and then print y. And this will print those that information to the consoles. And, Z. and that gets you all the three axes on your information. 
So we're just going to save as, or I guess save because we're in a Python. This, I'm going to go to my drive here, tutorial, there we go. And I'm gonna say git pause.py, save, just like that. And then I'm gonna open it. get post.py and I'm going to hook it up to the Python controller. All right, so should work just like that. Let's close that. Let's run the game. One second, oh, Blender game. Run the game. If I hit this space bar, the information is printed down here. If I move him over, Spacebar, the information is also printed down there. Of course, all three axes work as accordingly according to the information here. And you can use other more things in the Python library to get this to work. Now, this is very useful when creating a randomly generated infinite terrain that goes in a three dimensional space, so up, down, and on the left and right axes. So up, down, front, back, forward, le uh, left, right, and diagonally. It's very useful to have position data. It also, if you want to make um, debug or anti-cheats, and if you say you have a multiplayer game and you want to write an anti-cheat, this position data is what you're going to need to be using. This can ensure that if it, uh, the Z goes above a certain number, that that means they're flying or something like that. and. It can be just very useful to have this in debug purposes because Blender doesn't provide that right off the bat, so you don't always know if your object, when your object is running in real time, where he is going. This example being the W key and motion. So if I go on negative uh, X here. Not select that. Uh, there we go. Oh, fun fact! If you hit enter in the uh, entering, hitting the enter key in the console will start your game. Sometimes I don't know. Okay, there we go. So W key, space bar, W key again, space bar, different results again, space bar, different results. That could just be really useful to have this in for debug or voxel or whatever purposes you're going to be using this in. Anyways, I hope you have enjoyed. My name is Coander Heidi from Lobology.com and um, new video will be a new video coming out uh, based on this exact purpose will um, and exact principles will be coming out very soon, I hope. Let's see what I can do. Hint, hint, click, click. Um, but yeah, so uh, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did enjoy, it would be, help me out a lot if you could hit the like button. Or, and if you haven't subscribed already, uh, do subscribe because I release many videos like this as far as tutorials go. And I'm hoping to, come, to become more frequent about it. Anyways, see you all later.